Cartagena has always been a place that's fascinated me and now that I'm finally here I have put in weeks of research to create a guide for you telling you what to do, what to see, where to stay, what to eat, where to shop and so much more. Now let's take a look at Cartagena. Cartagena the most awaited stop on my Colombian adventures, located on the northwest side of Colombia on the Caribbean Sea. Back in the day, conquistadors shipped their treasures back to Spain from here, although the area had already been populated by indigenous people for thousands of years. Modern Cartagena is home to just over a million, making it a much smaller and more relaxed city than Bogota, and one that attracts a great number of tourists each year. There is so much beauty, mystery, and diversity surrounding Cartagena. Welcome to the complete guide. The walled city of Cartagena is a fantastic way to start your day. It spans about 11 kilometers and loops its way around the old city, making it a perfect historical stop for your first morning. You can walk right on top of the wall that was first designed in the 16th century and then completed by the 17th century. And from here you get this gorgeous view of the shore and then on the other side, you've got the whole city basically right beneath you. An early start to the day means you'll have the vibrant historical center all to yourself. This doesn't happen often, so make sure you walk around and take in the colorful surroundings before the city awakens. Honestly, to me it's absolutely crazy that Colombia can be home to somewhere like here, but also somewhere like Bogota, which is a vlog I'll link above. Now they are two completely and totally different cities, and yet only an hour apart. One thing about this place is that you will constantly be followed by vendors, street performers, and whatever this is. <laughs> Cartagena is home to many squares, some filled with cafes, restaurants, and art, and others home to churches and sanctuaries. My personal favorite being Sanctuario San Pedro Claver, dedicated to the famous 16th century missionary who helped baptize over 300,000 slaves. This place is so incredibly peaceful and I think when you come here, you will not only feel that, but you also get a sense of importance of Cartagena's history, which is unfortunately tied to slavery in a lot of ways. This man who lived here, died here, and is now buried here was so vital in championing for human rights, human equality, that it's important to sort of have that in mind when you're walking through the city and to remember the different parts of history that are linked to Cartagena. We are in Convento de la Popa, which is the highest point of this whole city and it was originally a 17th century chapel that has now become a famous tourist attraction. The ticket to get here costs about four and a half, five dollars, so that's equivalent to 13,000 Colombian pesos. And it really is worth coming here if you want to get a bird's eye view on all of Cartagena. On the drive back, you'll come across some local areas as well as the famous fortress. But now, it's time for lunch. Two options for touring Cartagena are obviously by horse, which is a very traditional thing to do over here. You get a horse-drawn carriage and that's one of the ways that you can see the old town or you can rent an old car, which I think is pretty cool as well. I personally prefer to walk. It gives you more freedom as to where to go, where to stop, and walking is perfectly safe over here. Now, in terms of where to stay, definitely stay in the walled city of Cartagena in the old town. This, once again, gives you so much flexibility. I'm staying in the Bastion Luxury Hotel, which has been incredible so far. And in fact, I'm just approaching it right now. So let me show you around.
No sunset is like a sunset in Cartagena spent on a rooftop bar. As day turns into night, Cartagena transforms into the perfect place to explore extraordinary restaurants, including 1621 a 17th century convent turned into one of the best spots for dinner. As a new day brings new opportunities, I'm about to show you why two days is the minimum amount of time you'll want to spend in Cartagena. I am in Getsemani, which is an area just outside of the walled city of Cartagena. It used to be known for a reputation that isn't quite the same as it is today. Now, obviously, it's known for graffitied walls, street art. But before, it was a place with lots of crime and uh, quite a bit of drugs, unfortunately. But that's all gone, and now tourists are very welcome to come here. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning. One thing I've noticed about Cartagena is that it is extremely photogenic so no matter where you look over here it is the perfect Instagram photo spot but the thing about this particular area is that it's a lot more local than the walled city of Cartagena so you get a peek into people's homes the way they live what they do on a daily basis children running around the streets you know dogs getting walked and I think that's the beauty of get some money is that you get to experience local life as well as getting your fix of being a tourist basically This part of Cartagena reminds me of a more hectic Miami. It's totally different to what you're gonna see in the old walled town of Cartagena. And the only thing that separates these two areas is a bridge. So make sure that you see both of them. It's really important to get the bigger picture of what Cartagena is. And Cartagena is not only the walled city, it is also the zone which is a lot more hectic, commercial, big, I mean, there's even a hotel that resembles the Burj Al Arab where employees have to wear turbans. So, yeah. Here in Cartagena, you will find a lot of artisanal crafts being sold. I personally just bought a handbag and a pair of shoes and the quality feels great. The prices are much better than anything you'd find in Europe. So I do recommend looking around and going on a mini shopping spree if you're here because you will find some really, really nice things. And speaking of shopping, why not visit the Cerezuela, which is the local shopping mall first built in the 19th century as a bullfighting stadium. A quick stop for lunch, a walk through the cathedral, and now time to burn off some calories at the local salsa school. As the weekend comes to an end, I know it's time to say goodbye to Cartagena. This place is a real gem and I know you won't regret coming here. There's just a little dose of magic everywhere you turn here, and that's exactly why I'm sure it'll exceed all your expectations. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Keep smiling, and I'll see you in another part of Colombia very soon. Oye, oye, si lo hacemos con la letra cristalina para la mujer divina que se llama Cristina. Hey, es Cristina, la mujer de Falabella. Ella brilla más que las estrellas. Ella no mueve cualquiera, la tiene que valorar. Es una actriz de la Rosa Guadalupe que se cuenta por acá. Muchas bendiciones y feliz Navidad. Pero por año no que mi Dios te bendiga. Cristina, oye, Cristina, beautiful, divina. Tengo tantas letras chicas, pero si quiero básico, la semana vamos a fondo. Tú sabes quién es esto, yo tengo talento. Hey, ella es Cristina, más bonita que Farina, no le llega ni a los pies, está la música rapé, hey, no te llega ni Selena Gómez, mira como yo lo hago porque es rapero la compone.